Hello, my name is Lindsay, and I've been invited by the collective to create a short little video of a fun little painting. So what we're going to do today is this fun abstract wreath. It only takes a, a couple greens, a little yellow, and some brown. Some patience and the willingness to have fun. That's key when you're painting. So let's go. All right, let's get to it. Uh, so the supplies you're going to need, paper, obviously, and then your watercolor paints, a pencil, any kind of pencil. And this plastic thing is my palette. Now, if you don't have anything fancy like this, a ceramic white plate will work great. Sometimes your watercolor set will come with a white lid and you can actually uh, do your paint mixing in there. So that's all this is for is paint mixing. We've got a little jar of water. We have some paper towel. We have our paintbrush. Now I'm using a smaller paintbrush that comes to a nice point. That'll make it easy to do details. And then I also have, you know, I'm using the lid of a jar, but you need something round because we're going to draw a reference before we get painting. So this seems to fit nicely. I've got space on the top and the bottom. What we're gonna do is center it and as lightly as possible, and I wanna stress this lightly, 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 we're gonna draw a circle. We're gonna use that as our reference for the center line of our wreath. There we go. See, even that's a little too dark. What you wanna do is have it light enough that when you start painting on top of it, it'll disappear. So I'm just erasing this a little bit, but this is just for me. If you think yours is light enough, it probably is, so go for it anyways. Alrighty. Now, the rule with watercolor is light to dark. Your paper is going to be the lightest thing that you have, so anything you add is always just gonna automatically make it darker, either color uh, or layers. And I like to work in layers with watercolor. So we're gonna start with a background layer. It's not gonna be very exciting. We're gonna take just a little bit of a gray or a black, mix it in with our water. I can already tell you that's way too dark. I want less. I like less. If you wanna go bold and big, by all means, go bold and big. But what you'll learn is you can always add extra layers. You can't subtract. That's the only downfall of watercolor. With acrylics and oils, you can hide it, but you can't with watercolors. All right. So we have our circle, and what I want to do is to make a background shadow that's going to lift the wreath off of our white background. So I'm just going to do really basic strokes all in the same direction all the way around, uh, going out and in. Excuse the dog. So let's go. And you can turn your paper as you go. I also encourage you not to go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. If you change it up a little bit, the inconsistencies make it look more realistic. If you look at a wreath or anything, nothing is perfect. I tend to add more going in. I don't know why. If you are left-handed, you're probably going to go the opposite direction of me, and that is 100% okay. Go with whatever feels easiest and right to you. So you see how light this is? I want this, since this is my base, I want it to be nice and light. Light, 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 light. I'd actually probably even go lighter. We'll do that. We'll add some more water. If your color is too dark, just add a little more water. And you see we're using this as the center point, the pencil line, and I'm not following it perfectly. You don't have to follow. Rules in painting are meant to be broken. You can go back and add more too. If there are different colors or different darknesses, also 100% okay. This will become your shadow. 
as if the wreath was hanging on a white door. We're gonna go all the way around. Once we get back to this, to our starting point, oh, running out of color. Can't hardly see it. And here's the great thing, we've made it all the way around and I can look at it and say, you know, I want a little bit more here or here or here. You can add more. I wouldn't overdo it. It's really easy to do too much and then afterwards you wish you did less. But I'm just going to add a little bit. There we go. Add a little dark over here. It's a little unbalanced right now. This is a great thing. Each of these strokes are still a little wet, so you can work with them until they dry out. So you're going to add a little more. But always remember, you can't take away. Once it's there, it's pretty much there. You can't take a little away. You can take a little bit away. Excuse me. It's hard. It's tricky, and it's really easy to wreck your paper. So just try not to do that. You see, I'm adding little extra bits, too. Just fun. Key is for to have fun. Okay. So that's our base layer. Just a single stroke in two different directions in a big circle. All right, now we need to let this dry for a few minutes. So we're gonna set this aside, let it dry. If we start painting on top of it, it will get mushy. That's a very technical term. So I wanna show you, we're gonna make a couple different types of pine needles and a pine cone. And we're going to use it as a pattern all the way around. We're going to do a couple things to make it uh, stand out without making it difficult. So we're going to start with, see that? Okay, good. I'm going to start with my lighter green. And I already have a little here. We're going to mix it. We're going to dilute it. We're going to do long, skinny pine needles. We're going to do a bunch of those. I'm just gonna show you what we're gonna do on here while this dries and make them really big, but I want you to see them first. So we're gonna start our bunch at one point and make long needles. One, two, three, four, five. Long needles like that. One, two, three, four. We can make them a little different once in a while. We can add a little yellow to them. One. Now you see how they all start from one point and go out? They can go the opposite direction. They can also be imperfect. One, two, three. You can have one that sticks out. Curves. Yeah. So that's our first set. Our next set is just going to be a pair, but they're going to be thick. One, two. We're going to do them in different colors. Add a little yellow. We'll go one, two. We can go short too. One, two. Our third one we're going to do is what you have on a Christmas tree. So you have a green branch, and you have short pine needles coming out the edge, all in the same direction on both sides and the end has three of them. Let's do it again. Long green branch, short needles, both sides. Now you probably noticed I'm moving my paper in all sorts of directions. That is okay. There are no rules when it comes to painting like this. Now these are still wet. And the other little trick I want to show you is if you want to add a little depth while it's still wet, you can add a little bit of darkness at the base. You don't have to move it much because it's still wet and the paper is going to move it for you. So I'm doing it right down at the base. If the paper's dried, it won't move. You'll know the notice the difference. It is hard to control watercolor sometimes. 
in each little here and it's gonna run out. I'm gonna, we're gonna do this on all of these, not all of these, but you know, we'll do them on a few. And what I wanna do is add a little yellow at the base of this one just to see what happens. But with just two lines or an extra line, we're adding a little depth. All right, so our last shape is gonna be just a set of dots. It's gonna look like a little pine cone. It's all interpretive. I'm using a dark, a little black, a little green, but I want it mostly black. If you had a little green, it almost looks like a brown. We're gonna do a set of dots. One, two, one, two, three. Now that looks like a little set of dots. Not very exciting, but once we add it to the piece, we'll see. Okay. We've given this a few minutes to dry. Now we're gonna do something a little different. We used our circle as our point of reference for our shadows to go in opposing directions. With these pieces, with our actual wreath, they can overlap. We don't have to start it at the line we can start it over here and go that way and vice versa the key is don't make it consistent i'm not going to go left right left right left right because it's going to look too consistent and imperfections are your friend so we're going to alternate a little bit so i'm going to start with my short needles oh and the other thing you can do you know just because we did the short needles in one color and the long needles in a different color. There's no rules that say you can't do long needles in that color or short needles in the kind of the yellow green. If you mix them up, it'll make it a little, a little more convincing. Okay. So I'm gonna mix, I'm gonna pre-mix a few colors. I'm gonna add some water. Cause I wanna make a few colors so I can just jump between them. bright. Yeah, they're real dramatic. I love it. Okay. Now you're noticing I'm getting colors in my, mixing colors in my paint. I would clean those out afterwards. Otherwise, you'll make yourself crazy when you wet them again and they get all over the place. Do a little brown. Actually add a little, just a little bit of the green. I don't want it. I almost never use the paints directly out. I think you should mix them. You know, I only have 10 colors here, but you have the full rainbow if you use them. Okay, let's start with some long needles. Oh, excuse me, that's loud. We're gonna start them here. One, two, three. Cross over the edge. One, two, three. I'm make them a little darker at the bottom. Just a touch of the black and the green right at the bottom. There you go. Okay. What you're gonna find is as you paint, you're gonna see spots where you can add your other shapes nicely. I like this spot right here where I'm going to add my short needles. I'm going to go here. One, two, three. There we go. Okay, let's do some fat needles. One, two, three. That little hole right there. Let's add a pine needle, or pine cone, excuse me. There you go. I'm using the same color consistently, and I don't like that. So let's mix it up. Let's use the yellow green.
you see how wet that is? I don't know if you can tell, but it's got a lot of water on it. So I'm gonna dry my brush a little bit, and vacuum that out just so it doesn't run. There we go. But now that it's a little drier, I'll add a little color at the end. There you go. Let's do some more of those long needles. Now I have to apologize, I'm making sound effects. If anybody's ever watched Bob Ross, you know that's where, where it's coming from. Now you don't have to work in a line all the way around. I have a habit of that. It's not an ideal habit actually. So I'm gonna go backwards. I'm gonna do some fat pine needles here. Do it again. It's a lot of fat pine needles. If we need to add a pine cone, there's no rules on this, on what you have to do in terms of a pattern. The best thing you can do is to make it look random. As you go along, you're going to find little spots where there's an opportunity to add. You'll just see a little spot that needs, needs a friend. These pine cones, I like to make the bottom, the wider part, darker. If you want your colors a little darker, you can add just a little bit of black. The rules I like to follow is light to dark, and there are no mistakes. Best way to learn to get better at this just to try. And these make really great cards. And not even to send on the holidays, just to send. Keeping in touch with your, your friends, your family, the people you might not see right now. It's so important. Now this is actually only gonna be our second layer. We're gonna do an entirely additional layer. We're gonna fill in the spots that feel like they need to be filled in. We want a fluffy wreath. I know I was saying you shouldn't go all the way around in one set, and that's exactly what I'm doing. So I'm gonna change it up.
Now, if you're jumping around, you have to be careful not to stick your hand in your wet paint. <laughs> You'll be really mad you do it, and it's inevitable, but just try your darndest not to. Now, these little spots are dried, so I'm adding a little color back, mostly at the center. I find that if you make the dark, the edges the dark, darker near the pencil line, It'll look like it's bunched together. You've probably noticed I haven't made any pine cones in a while. The reason being is pine cones fill holes between your vegetation really well. So that's what I'm planning to do in just a moment to fill in the holes that I'm making. Okay, let's do... A little brown. Let's make some pine cones. These pine cones are such a different shape. They really stand out. And they fit snug in those holes that you uh, make as you paint. You can also use them to hide your pencil line. Ooh. You see how I got a little of the brown here and it ran? Just a little bit. That's okay. Colors will run sometimes. I'm just looking to see how wet this is. Can you see that shine? I have a little bit of wetness. Let's add a couple more pine cones. Little pine cones. Right there. Don't have to add too many. You can always add more pine needles if you feel like you need it. Actually, over here I do. Be sure to switch your colors. If you use the same color a bunch in one spot, it's gonna look goofy. We've got real dark green, we've got kind of a yellowish green, we've got a lighter green, we've got a brownish green. All right, we've got some that have dried. So this is our opportunity to add a little darker green on them. Just at the base, single stroke. Doesn't have to go very far. Just a little bit gives it a little depth. You don't have to use the same green. I'm just doing that because it's easy. If you've varied your needles enough, you can use the same green for the center line. Nobody will notice. Mix them up, some bigger, some smaller. You can do the Darker green over the yellow green. All, make sure you go all the way around though. You only do it for part. It'll look unfinished. There we go. Yeah. Now I would suggest if your paper is really wet, 
you're gonna let it dry for a minute. Five minutes, 10 minutes, like ooh, the more dry, the better. Our final layer. We're gonna do a couple colors. We're gonna add a little blue to our green. I'm gonna make this a real, yeah, this will be our final color. I'm gonna do a pair of them actually. And I wanna add a really heavy on the yellow. Don't be afraid to experiment with colors. Colors are awesome. Now I wanna fill in more holes and we're going to do this by just adding more needles, mostly long needles, just in the white holes that I feel like need them. I want this color to be pretty, pretty strong. I don't want to have to come back and add another layer to these. I want this just to be a single swipe. What I'm going to do that's loud, sorry. mostly going from the center line that we originally drew and doing this is going to help you hide your pencil line from earlier there we go I did a round of the yellow green I'm gonna go back and do a round of this blue green and we're looking for those holes where it's just the gray or it just feels naked This is when I find myself really spinning my paper too. You can't tell, I've got to move everything out of the way. I have to be careful, there's wet spots. And paint loves to run. And there's no stop in your paint once it runs. It's just the nature of the beast. Controlling your paint is a skill. <laughs> Even the most skilled person usually makes a mistake. And that's okay. But you know what Bob Ross used to say? There are no accidents. Wait, no, there are no mistakes, only happy accidents. So I'm doing these blue-green blue swipes kind of closer to the center where I want more color, more overlapping. And what I like to do is I like to keep going and making these loops. Once you get all the way around, you should stop and look and say, does your, does your wreath look fluffy enough and bushy enough? And would you want to hang it on your front door for your friends and family to see? And if it looks too scrawny, add more. add too much. Oh, okay. I'm gonna stop for a second. Now I feel like this is pretty good, but you know what? Let's have a little fun. Let's take a little further. I'm gonna take a little, uh, you know, I'm gonna take a really light wash. We're just going to add little accents that are floating. I'm going to do a round in the center, all going the same way. We're not trying to be accurate. I'm going to do the same thing on the way on the outside. Just fun. Yeah, I like that. Now here's a couple suggestions if you want to go further. You could take a bright red and you know what? Let me move this. 
you need to let him dry above all. So I'm gonna just show it on this page real quick. You can take your bright red and you could do little berries. And you can fill in your holes anywhere. They're really brightly colored and because it's red, you have to make sure your green dries completely. Your, if it bleeds, it's gonna look goofy. Just be really mindful. I actually just love the greens and the browns. And the great thing about this piece is you've got space. You can write anything in here. You can write stuff outside. You can do anything. If you want to paint some uh, texture for your door, you can add that in or you can just keep it simple. The thing I encourage you to do is try this a couple different ways. If you find one, here's a previous pair I've done. This guy, he's pretty yellow, but he's still light. He's fun. He's playful. And then I decided to go a little bit darker and you've got a lot more layers. I like these needles. They just are kind of um, abstract. You can do a little of everything. So I encourage you to try lots of different ways. Thanks.